That leaves adults with me. Someone say praise the Lord. Not the same God. This is probably one of the most important messages I think I've ever will have ministered um, because it's so tragic and relevant at the same time. Um, some trend has been taking place the last couple of weeks that I've noticed, and it's been going on probably much longer than that. But I don't want to talk about it just yet. I want to give you an introduction to the scripture, and then I'm going to make, mention what this is, share a testimony with you. And it is one of the probably most dangerous deceptions I've seen to date. And how many of you know that our foundation is always the Word of God? Amen? Not the same God. Now, <clears throat> quick review, and then we're going to pray over the Word of God here this morning. Last week we were talking about shipwrecked faith, right? We learned that one's conscience can become seared and how to avoid that. We talked about making sure that if your conscience pricks you by the Holy Spirit, that you get it right with God immediately. Repent of it. Get it right. Don't ever, ever, ever ignore that conscience, that voice of Holy Spirit inside of you. Amen? And we talked about how that leads to shipwreck. We uh, shipwrecked faith. We also learned that people often allow their emotions to overrule the Scripture and how we can avoid this pitfall. Amen? And lastly, we learned last week to regularly examine our heart and our motivations to ensure they align with God's love and His will for our life. Amen? And we talked about those things, and of course those are available on YouTube in our playlist if you missed it. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we do thank You for the good word of the Lord. Father, I thank You for the Spirit of God to speak through me to these Your people. I pray, Father, that every word spoken be a word in season in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to give each of us hearing ears, seeing eyes, and a heart to ponder and to understand the Word of God and the things that are spoken, that we would apply them to our life this day in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen, amen and amen. So here we go. Super important message, guys. Stay alert, stay awake. We will learn that there is a critical difference between true worship and idolatry or false worship, even when the same name of God is invoked. In other words, you're going to learn just because somebody says God doesn't mean it's our God. Amen. And we're going to learn. We're going to learn today that true worship produces holiness, righteousness, and a life that honors God in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And lastly, we're going to learn that misrepresenting God, even with the right name, is akin to idolatry and false worship. And this is going on a lot, and you're going to see through the Scripture this deception and through the testimony that I share with you here this morning. But before I share that testimony... I want to look at the Word of God, and let's talk about avoiding the deception. How many of you think there's a lot of deception out there? There's election deception. There's uh, news media deception. I have to actually watch foreign news to see what's happening in the world because the news in America only, I'm talking about mainstream media, only shows you the things they want you to see. There are things happening all over the world, guys, all the time that are, some are stunning, some are amazing, some are terrible, uh, but you're not going to hear about it on the news, on our news. Uh, so there's a lot of a deception out there, but the most dangerous deception is the deception in these last days that affects believers, even strong believers, and that's what we're going to key in on. So first, this is Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Dietrich Bonhoeffer lived during the time of World War II. He was a German citizen. He was a pastor. He was a preacher of righteousness. He's my favorite German ever. Um, he stood up against the Nazis, even at the risk of his own life. 
even when he was imprisoned, even when eventually right towards the end of the war, before the end of World War II, they put him to death as a martyr. That was Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And he says this, he says, silence in the face of evil is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. And he would know what he was saying about that, amen? Dietrich Bonhoeffer. There is much evil today, and there are things we must speak out against, and today is one of those moments to help you and to keep you alert, awake, and free from this deception that I'm going to talk about in a few moments. In Exodus chapter 32, verse 1 through 5, we're in the Exodus. God has used Moses and Aaron and Heavenly Father through miraculous signs and wonders has delivered the children of Israel out of slavery, out of Egypt, into the wilderness. God has called Moses to go up onto Mount Sinai. This is the time he is to receive the Ten Commandments. He is up there for 40 days, 40 nights. He's been gone a long time. Now, verse 1 of Exodus 32, when the people, when the children of Israel who were in the wilderness had been delivered from slavery out of Egypt, saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together Aaron and said to him, come, make us gods that shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. He'd been gone 40 days. And you have to understand, God supernaturally delivered them. But they weren't content with the God who delivered them. They wanted new gods, false gods, to come and to lead them because they don't know what's happened to Moses. So this is their mindset. And they come to Aaron with this nonsense. Everybody say nonsense. That's using a nice word. And Aaron said to them, you know what, guys? Y'all are crazy. We serve the living God. The God of Israel delivered us. And we're going to walk in righteousness. We're going to wait for Moses. Is that what Aaron said? No. Aaron said to them, oh, guys, break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives your sons, your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand, and he fashioned it with an engraving tool, and made a molded calf. That was a lot of gold they brought. Can you imagine? God had supernaturally, through signs, through wonders, through miracles, delivered the Hebrew children from slavery. Y'all remember the Red Sea parted? Y'all remember a pillar of fire in front of the Egyptians to keep them from getting at the Hebrew children? All of these miracles had taken place, and they're ready at the first turn of events, at the first bad circumstance in their life to give up on the living God, to make false gods, and to go do their thing. And Aaron, and it's mind-numbing, stunning, blows my mind that Aaron, unless he was just so afraid of the people, but I don't think that's it because there's something that happens here in a minute that I'm going to show you that makes me think that he was like right there, his heart was right there with them. Look at this. So in verse 4, and he received the gold from their hand. He fashioned it with an engraving tool, made a molded calf. Then they, the children of Israel, said, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Can you imagine how that must have made our Heavenly Father feel after all the things he had done to bring deliverance to them? And now they've fashioned this golden calf. And Moses, he doesn't even realize what's happening. He's up on the mountain in receiving the Ten Commandments, written by the finger of God. So when Aaron saw it, he builds an altar before it. He's not done. So we've got the calf. 
Now we've got an altar. An altar is made to sacrifice animals to worship to this false god, this golden calf. But this is what gets me. This is the stunning part. This is the crux of what I want you to understand here today. When Aaron saw it, he built this altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Now, whenever you see the word Lord in capital letters in your English Bible, it means in the original Hebrew text, and you can fact check me, in the original Hebrew text, it's the name of God. It's yud heh vuv Yahweh. So Aaron actually points to the golden calf and to the altar that he made. He was probably pretty proud of his work. And he says, you know what? Tomorrow is a feast to Yahweh. He calls the golden calf Yahweh. yud heh vuv Was that golden calf Yahweh? So even though they called it by the same name, it was not the same God, the God of Israel. Now, it's important for us to get where we're going, for you to understand this and to grasp this. Just because people call something God, even if they call it Yahweh, does not make it so. Someone say amen. That's a great example, a golden calf called Yahweh. It was not Yahweh. I don't care what name they call it. Aaron called the golden calf Yahweh. Do we worship the same God as that golden calf simply because they use the same name? No. How many of you know that there's this deception out there, and we're going to get deep into this today, that You worship God, and I worship God, and we worship the same God. We do not. Just because you call him G-O-D, and I call him G-O-D, and your God's invisible, and my God's invisible, that's the only thing they have in common. Does not make him Yahweh. Does not make him Heavenly Father. Does not make him God of the Bible, the God of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the God of all. Someone say amen. There is a critical difference, saints, between the true worship and idolatry or false worship, even when the same name of God is invoked. They were involved in idolatry, even though they used the name of Yahweh. It was still idolatry. Matter of fact, it was so much idolatry, let me give you a, and you're welcome to read the story on your own back in Exodus, but let me give you a little history lesson of what took place. Moses came down, met Joshua halfway down the mountain. Joshua said, that's the sound of war in camp. Moses said, no, that's not the sound of war, that's the sound of partying, singing and dancing. And he gets down from his 40 days of fasting to the Lord to receive the Ten Commandments. He's got the stones in his hand, blue sapphire, engraved with the finger of God, and he sees them worshiping before this golden calf, calling it Yahweh. Moses, in anger, throws the stones down. They break. Make a long story short, tell you what Moses did. He took that golden calf and crushed it to powder, mixed it with water, and made all of them drink it. said, you want gold, I'm going to give you some gold. The Lord was so upset, he was like, you know what, Moses? Let's just destroy these folks, and let's start from your descendants. I'll make a mighty people out of you. And Moses, being the meek individual he was, prayed to God for their forgiveness, and God forgave them. This act of calling the calf by God's name was a profound blasphemy because it equated the true God with a man-made idol. This is true even if you and I equate the true God with an invisible idol. An example of this is the God of forces. I don't have the scripture up here, but if you're taking notes, I believe it's Daniel chapter 11, verse 28 where it talks about the future Antichrist who's going to come, and he is going to worship the God of forces. Some translations say the God of fortresses. 
the Antichrist is going to worship Satan himself, the God of forces. And just because people call him God doesn't make him God. There is only one God. Everybody say one God. Now I'm going somewhere with this. Bear with me. We're getting there slowly. In their practices, their teachings or representations, their contrary to God's nature is revealed in Scripture. They're not worshiping the God of the Bible. Just because they say, well, I believe in one God and he's an invisible God. And you believe in one God and he's the invisible God. So we believe in the same God. Well, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, everybody say whoa. whoa. Look at your neighbor say whoa. whoa. Wait just a minute. The God I serve is represented by scriptures and by the Lord Jesus Christ. And they teach that Jesus is the only way to God the Father. And you teach that there's other multiple ways to God the Father. And so the God that you teach and the God that I represent, even though we may call him God, are not the same God. And you can't tell me we worship the same God. We do not. Any representation of God that aligns with evil, sin, or falsehood is not the true God, regardless of the name used. What does your God represent? What does my God represent? If what your God represents is the same as what my God represents, I call you a brother. But if what your God represents is different from what my God represents, I call you somebody who's lost that I want to pray for and seek it saved. Someone say amen. Are y'all following with me? Are you tracking with me? Still getting somewhere. False worship even if it invokes the name of God, leads to spiritual destruction and separation from God. This is why it's so dangerous. True worship of God must be in spirit and in truth. John 4.24, Pastor Carl hit on this in his message on Friday night. The Lord Jesus had come to the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. And... He's like, go call your husband, because I have living water to give you. She says, I have no husband. He said, you're right. You've had five husbands. And the man you're with now is not your husband. She said, sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. And then her very next words are, you say that we should worship in Jerusalem. We say we should worship on this mountain, Mount Gerizim, in our temple which is right and he's like the day is coming and truly now is where the true worshipers of God John 4 24 shall worship the father in spirit and in truth everybody say in spirit and in truth true worship produces holiness righteousness and a life that honors God that reflects the Lord Jesus Christ If you don't believe in Jesus, you can't reflect Jesus. I don't care how good of a moral person that person is. They're not reflected of Jesus. It's impossible to reflect him if the Spirit of God doesn't abide in you. And the Spirit of God only abides in those who have received him, the Lord Jesus Christ. Someone say amen. Amen. Believers must discern the true God of the Bible from false gods, false teachings, and idols that might use the same name but do not reflect God's true nature. Now, how many of you maybe heard of or watched the Republican Convention? So one of the nights at the Republican Convention, they had a lady come up there and offer a prayer to God. The problem was, it was a sheik of the sheik religion. Sheik religion is from India. And in India, most of us know there are Hindus, and there are Muslims, and there are Sikhs. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Sikhs. 
Sikhs, right? And the Sikhs are kind of a combination of Hinduism and Muslim, and it's like this little mix, and they believe in one God, an invisible God, but they believe there are many ways to get to God, and that Jesus Christ is just a man, and that you don't have to believe in Jesus to get to heaven. Well, the problem is this. When that person prays, and all the believers are amen, they're not praying to the same God I pray to. You need to understand that. That's what idolatry is. Idolatry is prayers offered to a false God. Do you understand that? Let me say it one more time. Idolatry is prayers offered to a false God. Now this Sikh, she can pray for whoever she wants and do whatever she's asked to do, but I'm not going to stand in agreement with it because I don't serve the same God. Does that make sense? The Bible and Quran. Oh, I forgot this story. So this is the main... That was just a side note. That was for free. This one's going to cost you. So, over the last two weeks, there has been growing in popularity in the Christian world a woman who sings incredible, beautiful worship music. And no, I'm not going to give you her name. And I ran across a video and beautiful woman singing with a beautiful voice. I mean, beautiful voice. And I'm listening to it, and all of a sudden I had this weird feeling in my spirit. You ever get a weird feeling in your spirit? I had a weird feeling in my spirit. I thought, well, that's weird. It's just a worship song. I start looking through the comments there, all these believers. Oh, God bless you, and what a beautiful worship song, and thank you, Jesus, and all that, right? Well, I look up this singer, and I find out the singer is not even a Christian singer. They're a Muslim singer that writes worship music to their God. Their God is Allah. Not the same God I worship. Well, I thought we worshiped the same God. They say their God is the same God as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No, a different God. How do I know that? Because their God represents something totally different than our Heavenly Father represents. Someone say amen. amen. You have to understand, it's not the name. Remember what they call the calf? Yahweh. But was that calf representative of God? Absolutely not. Even though the name was the same. Are you tracking? Now, the Bible teaches, well, many things versus what their book teaches. Thou shalt love your neighbors as yourself. Jesus said that in Matthew 5, 14. He also said, thou shalt uh, love your enemies, pray for those who despitefully use you, do good to those who speak evil of you. And of course, their book says, fight everybody in the way of their God and kill those who disbelieve in their God. Does that sound like our God? That's not the God I serve. Even though they might call him G-O-D, and you might call your God G-O-D, I call him Father, but you might call him God, doesn't mean it's the same God. They worship the God of forces, just like the Antichrist will. We worship the God of Israel, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you understand? Give you a few more examples of this. So in the Quran is claimed to be the direct word of God sent through an angel, Gabriel, by revelation to prophet Muhammad. Listen. <clears throat> well, I'm just going to read the scripture. It speaks for itself. So Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. But even if we, the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul, writing to the church of Galatia, says, but even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be what? Let him be what? Accursed. I don't care if an angel appears and says he's Gabriel and Michael all mixed up together and gives you something that's contrary to the word of God, you don't receive it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. That man may have really seen an angel, but it wasn't an angel of God. 
The Bible says, be not deceived, for Satan himself comes and appears as an angel of light and deceives people. There was a time at my, uh, I was pastoring the first church, and I'm not sure if Pastor Carl was there or not, but we were pastoring our first church, and there was this guy at the apartment complex my wife and I were living, who had passed out all these flyers saying that um, he was going to have a special meeting there at the apartment complex clubhouse, and this meeting was to discuss his visitation that he had by an angel. And so my associate pastors and I, we prayed and we ended up going to that meeting because we want to share Jesus with him. So we go to this meeting, and his first thing is, I want to tell you what happened to me when the archangel Michael came to me and spoke to me. I raised my hand, and he called on me. He goes, yes. I said, how do you know it was Michael? Well, he said he was Michael. Yeah, but how do you know? What did he look like? Well, he looked like the picture in your Bible. I grabbed my Bible, which I had brought. My Bible has no pictures. I said, it has no pictures. And then I quoted to him the scripture in Galatians, if even an angel appears to you with a different gospel, not to receive it. So it doesn't matter if somebody says, well, I heard this from an angel. It's still a lie. A lie is a lie is a lie. Someone say amen. amen. Let me read Galatians 1.8 again. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel, what's the gospel? The good news of Jesus Christ. The representation of the message that God brings to people. You and I are messengers of the gospel. We represent Jesus by bringing the message of the gospel. So if somebody doesn't have the message of the gospel, they don't represent the God I serve. Doesn't mean I hate them. I pray for them. I pray for their soul. Because without Christ, they're going to die in their sin. Verse 9, as we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone, everyone say anyone, anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be anathema. In the Greek, let him be accursed. Now the end of verse 9 says let him be accursed. The end of verse 8 says let him be accursed. Whenever the Lord repeats himself, it's pretty important, amen? Especially in two verses. So if I say again, if anyone, verse 9, preaches any other message, any other good news to you, then what you've received, let him be accursed. The Bible teaches that Jesus was crucified. They died on the cross for our sins. The Quran says he did not. Which one represents our God? The Bible. Our God. Someone say amen. The Bible teaches believers, Jew and Gentile, are blessed of all people in God's special possession. The Quran says that we are the worst of all people. And I'm doubly worse because I'm a Jewish believer. <laughs> so I'm in double trouble, right? So what am I doing? I'm trying to explain to you that we don't serve the same God just because we use the same G-O-D. It is totally different representation of what they believe and what we believe. And as Christians, if you stand in agreement with those things, the Bible calls you an idolater involved in worship of a false god. And I went through these comments, and there were thousands of comments by believers, and I couldn't find a single one. Of course, you all know I had to say something in love. A single one that spoke out. And I said the same thing. I said, they call their God, God. We call our God, God. But it's not the same God. Our God represents the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's the Father of Jesus and the Father of us all. Amen? Amen? Their God is not. So just because it's pretty worship and sounds good, doesn't mean it's worship to my God. Because they have a different God. And this is what I picture happening. I really prayed about this. This troubled my soul deeply, as you can tell. <laughs> and as I was praying, 
I could almost see the moment in the future when Antichrist comes proclaiming himself as God, holding worship to himself in stadiums, and bringing together men and women of all faiths to worship him as Yahweh, as God. And how many of you know it's going to happen? The Bible teaches Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. The Quran says Jesus is just a man, only a prophet. If he was just a man, we're still lost in our sin. Because only his blood could pay the price for our sin. And his blood was special because he was born of a virgin. Someone say amen. amen. Remember that part of the Christmas story? It's more than just for Christmas. Joseph Smith. Uh-oh, here's another one. How many of you have heard Joseph Smith and the magic glasses, right? Joseph Smith saw the angel Moroni in 1830. Maybe he really did see this angel. This angel gave him all this revelation outside of the scripture. Mormons think Jesus was created and is not God. Well, the Mormons and I do not worship the same God. It's not like the Baptist denomination or Methodist denomination or the non-denominational denomination or the four-square denomination or Assembly of God denomination or even Lutheran or Presbyterian. At least we agree that there is Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's why Mormonism has always been considered outside of Christianity. Because just like the other religions, and it is another religion, they think Jesus is a created being and is not God. They also think God is married with flesh and blood children. I'm just giving you a few things to show that the God they worship is not the God I worship. Mormons deny the basic and essential doctrines of the Christian faith. They deny the deity of Christ and the eternal nature of Christ. They also deny that forgiveness of sins is by grace alone, through faith alone. Misrepresenting God, even with the right name, is akin to idolatry and false worship. Do we love these people? Of course we do. And we pray for them. <coughs> and we have a responsibility to share the gospel with them. Amen? My wife and I had the privilege one time of... Uh, <coughs> normally, I, I won't even invite them into my house. But one day... Uh, I just sensed from the Holy Spirit. There was two Mormons came to our home in this town we were living in, the city we were living in, and I had them come in, and um, I told them, as they started to go through their Mormon stuff, I said, um, <clears throat> let me ask you a question. I said, are you living everything that the Bible says you need to live from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation? And they said, no. I said, well, when you start living everything from Genesis to Revelation, then we'll talk about adding another book by somebody else to it, the Book of Mormon, right? And then I shared with them the testimony of God's salvation into my life and how the Lord Jesus Christ delivered me from a life of religion, a life of lostness, to a life where I serve the living God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And they got so shook, am I lying, Mama? They got so shook, they physically began to tremble because the Spirit of God was moving on their life. And come to find out a week later, they had to send them back to Salt Lake City for further indoctrination because, seriously, because they were so shook up. But it's the Word of God. So I'm saying all that to say these, they need Jesus. There's people in here I know it used to be Mormons that God's brought them out of the Mormon church, had them be born again. They're saved, sanctified, set free, living for Jesus Christ. Amen? But my point is this, just because they say God and we say God and Muslims say God, it's not the same God and you can't never say it is because it's represented by a different thing than what our God is. And if you fall in line with that, it's idolatry. Does everybody get that? Very serious stuff. And I guess I was so disconcerted, if I can use that word, because looking through the comments, there were so many well-meaning believers giving her so much encouragement in her worship and her song. And it was a beautiful song. The only problem is to the wrong God. It's like, what if the children of Israel were singing such a beautiful song 
to the golden calf they called Yahweh. Does that make that song right? Does that make the idolatry right? Do you get the point? Okay. 2 John chapter 1, almost done, coming in for a lane. We might get done a little early today, brother. Who am I and where's the pastor? 2 John chapter 1, verse 10 through 11. This is out of the Amplified Scripture, Amplified Bible. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, is disloyal to what Jesus Christ taught, do not, what? Do not what? Don't receive him. Do not accept him. Do not welcome or admit him into your house or bid him Godspeed or give him any encouragement. I never tell somebody preaching a false gospel, God bless you. I'll say, may the Lord save you. May God bless you by opening your eyes and heart to the truth of Jesus Christ. But I'm not going to bless their foolishness. It's idolatry. Do you understand that? Why would I ask God to bless their idolatry? It says, don't do it here. There is a special, special danger to those who bring false doctrine. And false doctrine comes by way of other religions and comes by those who pervert the true gospel of Jesus Christ as well. Do not accept him. Don't welcome or admit him into your house or bid him Godspeed or give him any encouragement in what he's doing. You need to do what? Pray for him and share the truth with him. Everybody say share the truth. I shared this with somebody in Sunday school. You know, the Bible says that the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, and he who knows the truth and the truth will set you free. And the first part of that is knowing the truth. You've got to know it. They're never going to have freedom until they know the truth. And they're only going to hear the truth if you and I are willing to share the truth. Amen. And in order for you and I to share the truth, you've got to know the truth yourself. Because there are so many Christian, biblically illiterate people who, man, I fear for their soul, honestly. It's like a mass epidemic out there. For he who wishes him success, who encourages him, wishing him Godspeed, is a partaker in his evil doings. Wow. I'm not going to wish this woman Godspeed. I'm going to wish her salvation and share the truth with her in love. In love. Everybody say in love. But love speaks the truth. Done it. Love speaks the truth. Amen. Last scripture as we come in for a landing. Wheels are down. Congregation stunned because I'm almost done. <laughs> Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9 through 12. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of what? Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. This is a prophecy about the coming of the Antichrist. And when he comes, guys, he's not just going to be, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Joe Cool on the political trail on the worldwide stage and everybody just loves him because he's such a kind person. He's going to come with all power, authority, signs, lying wonders. There are false spirits, demonic entities attached to this stuff. These people are like, wow, what beautiful word. There was a spirit attached to the music. Do you understand? The problem was it's not the Holy Spirit. God's not going to attach Holy Spirit to music that worships idolatry. Do you understand that? So Antichrist, when he comes, is coming after the working of Satan, Daniel eleven twenty eight, I believe it was. I said where he's going to worship the God of forces. He's coming with all power, all signs, and lying wonders. Everybody say lying wonders. <laughs> Man, y'all think there's lies now. You haven't seen anything yet. All that you see is preparation, preparing the foundation for future Antichrist kingdom with all the lies. Do you understand it? I mean, everything he says and does is going to be a lie. 
It's no wonder his father is the father of all lies, Jesus said, right? It says out of his mouth, that's all that comes out is a lie. He can't speak the truth. He was a liar from the beginning. Don't take my word. That's what the Lord Jesus said. So Antichrist, who worships the God of forces, is coming with lies. And he's going to change everything. He's going to change calendar dates and holidays and times and all of that. Everything based on a lie. And you know what? Those who at that time... Uh, where am I at? And those at that time... Who are still here... Are going to be deceived. How do we know that? The Bible tells us. With all... Unrighteous deception. Everybody say deception. Among those who what? It's not people who are being saved to salvation who are deceived. The deception is among those who what? Perish. Why are they perishing? Because they did not receive the love of the... And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Remember, it's the truth you know, right? So you shall know the truth. The truth sets you free. They didn't receive the love of the truth. They didn't want to receive the truth. Well, I don't agree with that. <laughs> and off they go. Well, you know what? You have free will. You can agree or disagree with whatever you want. You can read the Bible and disagree with all of it. You can disagree with some parts, agree with some parts. But you know what? One day you and I are going to be accountable for it. It's our faith that pleases God. Someone say amen. Faith is believing. The word of God is the word of God, guys. It is immutable, unchangeable. Heaven and earth will pass away, the Lord Jesus said, but my word shall abide, what? Forever. Everybody say forever. And how long is forever? Long time. And with all unrighteous deception, among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved, verse 11. And for this reason, what reason? Because they did not receive the love of the truth. For this reason, God will send them what? Strong delusion. Everybody say strong delusion. I mean, it's not just a little bit of a lie. It's a strong delusion. I mean, these folks are going to be head over heels for any Christ. Even the Jews at first, many of them are going to think Antichrist is the Messiah. Jesus said, remember, I don't come in my own name, but I come in my Father's name, and me you don't believe, but one is coming after me in his own name, and him you will receive? Just for a short time, that first three and a half years. And then they're going to realize when he sets up his image in the temple, uh-oh, we got the wrong guy. Got the wrong guy. Well, let's not wait till then, amen? Let's realize that there is idolatry active already going on all over the place, guys. Let's beware not to be apart, amen? That they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. I don't want strong delusion in my life to believe a lie. I want to know the truth. I want to believe the truth. I want to love the truth. I want to walk in the truth. Amen? Amen? I don't care what they call the golden calf. I want to serve the true God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And our God is the same. He never changes. Amen? Amen. He is the same yesterday. Jesus Christ, who is God come in the flesh, is the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen? Jesus told Philip, he said, uh, Philip, you know, I'm going to close with this thought. Philip said, Lord, if you show us the Father, show us Heavenly Father, it will be sufficient for us. Which always cracks me up because he'd seen the dead raised. He'd seen lepers cleansed and blind eyes open. It's like, dear Lord, how much more do you need to see? Show us the Father and it'll be sufficient. And Jesus looked at him and said, Philip, how long have I been with you that you don't recognize me? For when you have seen me, you have seen the Father, for I and the Father are one. 
What is he saying? Jesus is saying, you want to know what God the Father looks like? Jesus Christ is the reflection of God the Father. And you and I are supposed to be a reflection of Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's all stand to our feet. Y'all still love me? Preaching the truth, guys, because I'm telling you, there is deception already out there and it's going to not get better. I wish I could say, oh, it's going to get better and everything's going to be hunky-dory. It's not. It's going to get worse. And we need to be alert. We need to be aware. Amen? We need to walk in the love of God. Someone say amen. amen. Pray for those who are involved in false religion. I was involved in false religion. Right? A Jew that didn't believe in Jesus taught my entire youthful life that Jesus was just a good teacher. No, he's the son of the living God. Amen. Crucified, rose from the dead, whose name must be preached in the world because only through his name is there salvation and forgiveness of sin. So God can save people from... How many of you were involved in some sort of false religion before you got saved? Anybody? Several of you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. 